Hi, I'm here with Dr. Daryl Nam, who's a plastic and reconstructive surgeon with over 30 years experience. Over his career, his scope of practice has been very broad and has covered most aspects of this specialty, including trauma, burns, scarring, hand surgery, and aesthetic surgery of the face, breast, and trunk. In this video tutorial, we'll be discussing trigger finger. So Dr. Nam, what is trigger finger and what causes it? Thanks, Sue. Uh, trigger finger is part of the consequence of having tenosynovitis. And tenosynovitis is an inflammation of the tendon, mostly the tendon bursa around it, the, in, the uh, in soft enveloping layer around tendons, which allows them to glide. That gets inflamed uh, through a form of sterile inflammation arising from trauma. So it's a repeated um, the repeated action of a tendon, finger or wrist that causes this um, sterile inflammation of the tissues. What people are experiencing after they get this is pain, just radiating pain along the tendon, which might be in the finger and sometimes occurs around the wrist tendons. And one of the common conditions described is de Quervain's tenosynovitis of the wrist, which uh, a lot of people are familiar with. When you get uh, tendon inflammation in the fingers, uh, it doesn't have a specific name, but if it's persistent, uh, you can get trigger finger as a consequence. And this is because um, the inflammation of the tendons tends to occur around the various pulleys on the along the finger tendon sheath. Pulleys are little thickened ligaments across the joints. Uh, within the tendon sheath itself that stop the tendon bowing or bowstringing when the finger's flexed. And it's these points which become the pressure points when the tendon's used a lot and the fingers are flexed and, and they become the site of inflammation. We see trigger finger occurring at what is called the A1 pulley, which is the pulley at the base of the, the hand just opposite the joint, the, the knuckle joint. So it occurs right at this point. And if the tendon inflammation goes long enough, the tendon starts to get thickened. And we also think that the tendon sheath, which forms a little hood around the tendon, also gets a bit inflamed and the scarring that develops tends to shrink that. What if people might experience is triggering where the, this little um, nodule or thickening in the tendon is pulled through a tight little tendon pulley. I've got an illustration here to perhaps demonstrate the function, how this happens. So what I've illustrated here is the tendon at this point, the tendon pulley, a little nodule in the tendon where it's been running under, up and down under this. And as this runs up and down it, it flicks through. So when the finger is flexed, this little nodule comes on this side of the tendon um, pulley and when, it, when you straighten the finger, it takes a bit of effort, you straighten it and it flicks through and you get this pop as the finger straightens. In severe cases, you can't even um, straighten the finger. It becomes flexed and fixed in a position of flexion. It's painful, for pa it's painful for uh, patients that have got this condition when they're flicking their finger up and down. Mm, indeed, I can imagine so. The, initial, tr the initial treatment of tenosynovitis is to try and reduce the inflammation so it can be done by local injection of steroid or using anti-inflammatory drugs non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs and when um treatment's quite easy then. when it becomes uh established and it's not responding to any um conservative treatment like that then the treatment is to cut the tendon pulley to allow free movement of the tendon and that's a simple operation that can be done under local anaesthetic. Generally, there is not any permanent impairment as a consequence of this condition. Uh, in the wrist, you, the tenosynovitis that causes de Quervain's uh, syndrome is treated similarly, although in that case, there's often not a nodule in the tendon that develops and there's no restriction of movement. It's just usually is incredibly painful for people when they're using their wrists. Uh, the treatment's the same, steroid injection for, you know, as a conservative measure, uh, surgery if it's 
not responsive. Now, it occurs both in the workplace where there's people using um, tools, instruments, machines in a repetitive way, and it can occur in the domestic situation. It can occur in people who have some systemic conditions, such as rheumatoid arthritis or diabetes. So individual cases need to be assessed on their merits and um, the activities in the workplace need to be carefully considered as, as to whether you attribute it to a workplace incident. Yes, I can imagine that uh, this presentation having an element of spontaneity makes it to make it more difficult to determine liability. Generally, generally it's got a, it's time related and occupational related. So I think you can often differentiate what has occurred through natural means or systemic means outside of the workplace. Maybe it's difficult at some stages, uh, but generally it can be determined. Is what we what we do find is that uh, conditions that are aggravated by work also fall into this category. So somebody might be given the benefit of the doubt uh, within their occupation. But I think that you do have to demonstrate that there has been certain um, activities in the workplace that are causing or aggravating it. So is there any role for allied health or any other treatment for trigger finger? Well, the initial uh, treatment in a conservative manner would also involve splinting. So perhaps a medical practitioner who didn't want to take that on himself might uh, refer the, the patient to a hand therapist uh, for some splinting or wrist splinting, if that's the case. And that's usually part of the treatment. Um, wait until the symptoms subside. It's important to keep uh, the finger moving, even though you've got trigger finger, it's important to keep some movement going in the finger because inflammation within a tendon sheath can uh, result in some adhesions. So it's important to keep uh, a bit of movement happening, even though you've got this condition. Can trigger finger resolve on its own without surgical or steroid intervention? If, if rest is given uh, and it's a mild condition, it can resolve on its own. So what's the prognosis for trigger finger? Generally, the prognosis is excellent. Uh, there's treatments available which will correct this condition. There is an, inter there is an interesting condition that occurs in uh, newborn babies up to one year of age that can develop trigger finger of their thumb. That's an interesting one. Not too much work done there. No, interesting. And what about for the case manager? setting expectations for return to work somebody with trigger finger who's either had steroid injection or second secondly surgical intervention what should a case manager expect of the individual when should they get them back to work and what kinds of should there be modification of duties in the interim well it is a pain, fairly painful condition if uh, a worker has got is a process worker and you know using their hands a lot uh, we have to give them time to settle. And I think, let's suppose they had a steroid injection and they were resting. I think uh, a, a time period of one month is probably realistic. Uh, it depends on the worker and their own um, motivation. So if they wanted to get in a bit earlier and work, um, perhaps in modified activities, that would be reasonable. But with all process, with all activities uh, in relation to healing of the hands, you've got to allow quite a few weeks for tissues to settle and and to resolve. It's not just like an instant. Once an ache is gone, that's not the end of it. Um, you've got to wait for the repair processes to occur and give it appropriate time. So thank you, Dr. Nan. Thank you for sharing your insight on trigger finger. And of course, if there are any referrers who would like to seek your opinion on a trigger finger incident for an individual, you can be booked via the booking on the screen, www.meddirect.com.au forward slash Dr. Daryl Nan. Thank you. Thank you very much.